record of this, huh? A record? Oh, yes. Yeah. There's the dog on the back. Watch the glasses. How's what? We brought that maker's mark up. I'm gonna have me a little Where's sour mash and branch water. Let me get a spin on the table, whatever you call it. Excuse me. There were a few times hey. out there today where I felt it was extreme. You mean the big hole back there? Yeah. <coughs> when I saw Joanne's feet, Joanna's feet go. Skyward. That boat stood up and I said, okay, is this one I'm going to flip? Are we going to flip right now? And then we didn't flip. I said, okay. You fine. were best double, though. Yeah. We were. That happened real quick, didn't it? Well, you weren't there. Yeah. Well, we were, uh, uh, I wasn't where I wanted to be. And, uh, you know, we were side to side instead of front and back. I looked up and shit there with that hole. I said, shit, got to eat it. Go. Oh. The big hole is in Elkhorn? Elkhorn. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. That something scared me when I looked at that. Yeah. It was a good straightforward thing, though. It was right even right across. Uh, I just didn't want nothing to do with it. Though. I don't want to be I looked it down. I don't want nothing to do with that hole. It was like, you know, like that old bar, the old neighborhood bar when somebody new walks in, everybody looks up and you know, just watches them. They did. We sat down at the bar. Here? Yeah. Packy McFarland walks over and says, I'm here's my, I ain't been in Stanley 
15 minutes now. Packy walks over. My size. Yeah, Packy's about pin pet size. Walks over and looks at me and says, you want to fight? What? I said, no. You'll fight <laughs> <laughs> and he and Ralph turned around and walked off and left me there. He did? Yes. And so, pick up the story. <laughs> Let's hear the rest of it, Pity Pat. I he said, I'll it. kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was just going. Of course, that's all Packy needed. He, all he wanted was to buy him a drink. You know, that's how he was. Sure, Packy, how about a drink? Wow. The only thing you could see... There were no lights on the tow plane. He was towing you around all over the countryside. And no communication with him. In combat there was, but there wasn't any. Anyway, and the exhaust was all you had to go by where he was. You know, where he was high or low. And, uh, was it C-47? On this occasion, no, C-47s often and usually. This was a Grumman Avenger. Mm -hmm. um, an attack bomber, you know. Um, all combat airplanes by the end of the war are lighter for uh, P-38s. <laughs> I don't know if they ever use them that way or not. But anyway, uh, you know, the government goes crazy when it gets into something. Mm -hmm. And this guy's towing me, and I don't know where we are. I just know when I get a little flash that it's time to get off, I'm to get off and count so many seconds this way and so many this way. And Dalhart, Texas, it didn't matter much anyway because it was... <laughs> then when you flared, when you felt the, uh, when you heard the sagebrush or the grass on the wheel. <laughs> because you didn't have other noises, you know. You had wind noise. But that, uh, when you're being towed, you had a lot of noise. But when you slowed down at line speed of 85 miles. So this guy's towing me, and he'd been towing all day. He'd probably been towing for 24 hours. Worn out, you know. And all of a sudden, ahead of me was all flame and sparks and uh, everything under the sun happened. Fire. And uh, I cut off instantly because if there's no tension on the roof, you can't get off. If you get farther ahead of him, if you get ahead of him, he pulls you down. So anyway, I cut off and landed it. And uh, what happened was he had just fallen asleep and flew into the ground. And the airplane just bounced along, and he wasn't hurt. And the airplane wasn't hurt too bad either. The gear, the gear was up, you know, he just bellied it. <laughs> oh, oh, that was, uh, Buckshot is another one. Do you know, uh, John, uh, 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 he, uh, he's the guy that shot one of our bush pilot's airplanes. He was shooting at a grouse, and he put all the pellets right through the guy's vertical stabilizer. Was he and, on the ground? Yeah, he was on the ground at Pistol <laughs> Creek. And, and I kept telling Ray, I said, it's probably just a jealous husband, Ray. I don't think old Buckshot did that. You know, That's how he got his name. But, yeah, there are a lot of great stories about these guys back here. Formality. And he get one magnet this morning, 45 batteries in it. And they said, Jim, you don't come to war. Good I'll come to war in the morning. You took all of them? I don't know. I don't think I took all of them. Yeah, I don't know. I put them on some of them. They had sad rivers in there. Well, it was like uh, 13, 14 years ago. No, I probably did. He came home with the most miserable looking set of antlers. <laughs> and every time you can put your saddlebag, every time you can't hit a drum. This isn't a drum, it's going off. The senior member of the entourage. I guess, and I'm like, you know what I mean? I mean, I have this all over the size of my And Tom, I, you know, I see Tom. And I'm just going to take my we got to find him on Yeah, Connie, I'm I always kick off with the John Prine tune, so you got to quit what okay. you're doing. Okay, okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Go on, sit down, that's your chair.
Okay, now go. Fire in the hole. Like it. Well, he starts drinking heavy, gets a big red nose, and he beats his old lady with a rubber hose. Takes her out to dinner and he buys her new clothes. That's the way that the world goes round. That's the way that the world goes round. You're up one day, the next you're down. It's a half an inch of water, you think you're gonna drown. That's the way that the world goes round. I was sitting in the bathtub, counting my toes when the radiator broke and the water froze. I was stuck in the ice, up to my nose, naked as the eyes of a clown. I was crying ice cubes, hoping I'd croak when the sun shined in and the ice all broke. I stood up and laughed, thought it was a joke. That's the way that the world goes around. That's the way that the world goes around. You're up one day. The next you're down is a half an inch of water. We think it's gonna drain. That's the way that the world goes. There was a guy on National Public Radio a couple of weeks ago who owned a guitar collection. Yeah, on to Mark Twain. He owned Mark Twain's Martin, made by Martin himself. Yeah, 1843. Yeah. Did you hear him play it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounded great. And he played old Susanna. He played old Susanna. He sure did. Yeah. Identical twins by his second wife, Mary Nell. <laughs> and of course, he brought his new wife, Kay. She talked all about hey, hey. A chain smoked while the stereo played the night of the first Noel. The first Noel. Carve the turkey, turn the ball game on. We'll get some old beer with the eggnogs gone. Send somebody to the quick pack store. We need some more ice head extension cord. A can of bean dip and some diet right. A box of tampons and some Marlboro lights. <laughs> Hallelujah, everybody say cheese. It's Merry Christmas from my Got in the scow and kept going, and then never were seen again. Everything in order. There was a camera on the deck, and a pencil, and a notebook, and, and uh, 
the log of the trip, I guess, and they never saw either one of them. But Emery Kolb was one of those who was hired by the government or somebody to go down and find them. And they found that scout just sitting in an eddy bank. Nobody knows where the accident might have taken place, but at least... Did they ever figure out who the body was that he had in the garage? I'm not for sure, but there was conjecture that it was Glenn Hyde. But if it had been Glenn Hyde, it must have been after the wreck. If they got back to cold and... Maybe they got to the no, I'm going to go through that point there. It is. Wow. A Campbell's Fried Chicken. We Ooh. named it last year, remember? We couldn't think up a name for it. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. Look at the The right kind of chicken. Nice. Some feta cheese, some pasta. The famous Campbell's Fried Chicken. Let it be selling. Put the boat on the side. Actually wasn't even in the rapid yet. Hadn't even got into the rapid when I flipped the boat. Consequently swam the rapid. Got out right at the bottom of the rapid. My passenger, he got out at the top of the rapid. He was smarter than I was. Now when you say got out, did he fall out or did he jump out or did he? Jesus Christ would have been proud of the act that I saw behind me as I look back as uh, Garrett Brown jumped off the raft. Oh, Garrett Brown. Garrett Brown jumps off the raft, does his best Jesus Christ imitation for 20 yards of river, doesn't touch the water, and then does a great Spider-Man imitation as he climbs up the rock to the top of the rock. So he's up safe and sound and I'm still in the raft. So I look up ahead at Mike McLeod and Joe Denton who are in the raft right ahead of me. And I'm swimming and I'm looking at them and I see Joe Denton grab the throw bag and I'm thinking, this is it. I'm going to be saved. And I am going through a big hydro and I come up and Joe Denton grabs his throw bag and he gives it a mighty throw off into my direction and the thing goes straight up and comes down four feet from the front of the boat. <laughs> and I look at Joe Denton and I flip him off. <laughs> As I'm going over and do another hydro. And Garrett Brown's watching all of this back up on the rock that he did his Spider-Man imitation on. And he sees me heading to the bank. I decided that if I needed to get out of that river, I had to get out myself. So I proceeded to swim to the shore there. Big nasty log jam or rock jam or something I didn't want to uh, get into. And I kind of grabbed the cliff right before we headed into this nasty section. And of course my semi-dry, which is indeed only semi-dry, at this time was semi-wet, it filled up down to the bottom here with 10 gallons of water. So that semi-dry suit was for truck drivers, really. <laughs> Absolutely. It was never made to be It was not the made to be to be swum with. So I grab the cliff and I'm sitting there and my little legs are flopping out in the current. And I the current's fast enough, my legs are flopping out. I'm holding on to the cliff here and I'm trying to decide what's gonna happen next when Garrett Brown comes down off the rock. Gives me a hand, pulls me back up. And we said, what do we do now? Garrett said head down the trail. <laughs> so we headed on down the trail, hoping to find Mike McLeod, Doug Timms, and Joe Denton, and my boat. And the story that was told to me by these guys is they chased this boat down the river for four or five miles and watch it go through these big rapids and it would go into these big holes and it would stand upright. And then it would crash back down and they would go over to it and they'd clip on. They clipped onto it about three times and then unclipped themselves from it because they couldn't get it in. A couple of times the boat would come up and it would shake in the air and it would almost come right side up, but then it wouldn't. It'd go back on its, on its belly again. 
Well, they finally got it in. We ran down the bank and found them, turned the boat over. And the only thing that was lost, which now thinking about it is probably the only thing that should have been lost, was Joe Denton's video camera. I don't remember that. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that was payment yeah. for, the, uh, for the rescue bag toss. Yeah. His video camera. And then luckily, I went down the next week with Janice. And so I was able to get back on the horse and run ladle again that next week. And we did just fine. We did just fine. Um, 20 or 21. What do you got to say about this, Martin? About anything. Well, it's an ill wind. Oh, nobody good. I've heard that before. Or if it's an oboe, it's an ill wind, but nobody balls good. 